Hi, I'm Jerome Glenn. I'm the executive director of the Millennium Project, which is a decentralized global think tank with many nodes around the world, including Korea and Dr. Park Young Sook. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, how long have you been uh, <clears throat> coming to Korea? Do you remember? No. <laughs> uh, probably <laughs> 15 like, to 20 yeah, years or something. Yeah, yeah. Over the 20 years, and 20년간 한국에 뭐한 2, 30회 왔다 갔습니다. You've been participating in the uh, global leaders forum, whatever, all kinds of yes. forums that you're a yeah, right. keynote speaker. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are you up to nowadays? What are the recent uh, developments? Okay. Well, I'm doing several things. Um, one is uh, conducting an AGI study with three phases. The first phase is to bring together 55 world AGI leaders to answer 22 questions. That has been done into a 60-page document that your viewers can get a hold of if they just go to our website and they just scroll down to get to artificial general intelligence. Then the second phase lists 40 different potential regulations, rules, guidelines, initial conditions, and so forth, and then asked uh, over 200 people around the world to answer how important each of those regulations should be or whether they shouldn't be done, and then to explain their answers so we had both numbers on each regulation and text for each regulation. That is now complete. I'm pulling that together, and hopefully that report will be available in a few weeks. Then the third state will we start, which will be the scenarios. We'll do alternative scenarios. Just like we did for a previous report, the Work Technology Future, what, Work Technology 2050 report, where we had three scenarios and then what to do about them. So we'll do three scenarios in a similar detailed way for artificial general intelligence as well. But it'll be focus, hopefully, on governance. Here's governance works, here's government doesn't work, and why. So, uh, when does it finish? When do you have uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought I would have finished other projects before now. I keep getting interrupted by this wonderful conference. Uh, I would suspect we'll finish the scenarios in like three to four months from now. Yeah, because we, they, they, we got to go because we not only got to write drafts, we have to review them as well. So it, it, it's, it's been, you know, a little bit of interaction. But the first two reports by themselves are excellent. I mean, you know, if if somebody in Korea in the in the assembly is responsible for putting together the laws for Korea, this is a useful background document for them to go through because they can see not only the ideas, but they can see the commentary on the ideas. Actually, I uh, publicized the, uh, the 22 questions, in, you know, all that. Yeah. Uh, and also there's a... Uh, Tufi Saliba, the guy. Yes, what? Tufi Saliba, hypercycle Tufi Saliba. Oh, yeah. 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 He came to Korea and asked me to sort of, uh, you know, establish a uh, company or organizational foundation called IACAI, which is the International Agencies for Copyright for AI. People. <laughs> You don't have enough you're doing, I can tell. <laughs> People, you know, AI will sort of produce more content than human beings within two, three years. So the AI is thinking well, about AI. Well, you know, on, Git, on GitHub, you know, where yeah, they keep yeah, the software, yeah. the majority of the, the lines of code now are already AI generated, not human. Yeah, it's already passed, yeah. yeah. So, so those uh, AIs should give uh, some sort of credit to AI content yeah. to collect some funds. You know, at the moment, uh, AI created no no compensation, no nothing. So that's what uh, they are saying. Yeah. So Interesting. these do not like regulations. Yeah. And uh, what, what kind of uh, regulations or uh, laws do you think we require for the whole? Well, there has, each country's got to come up with a licensing system. Each country different. 
Well, they might be similar, but it's but you might stress one thing, and Korea and Japan might stress something else. But both, but they would be similar. But you still get your final. It's just like the International Atomic Energy Agency says world standards. But how it gets managed is that's a local decision in each country. So I think the same thing will be happening with this. So you have a licensing system in a country, a whole bunch of procedures to get your license. The licensing procedure has to be approved by a, a future UN agency to certify that, because otherwise you could have some bribery and the rest of this stuff. Uh, and there would have to have links between the developer, the corporation that sells, the government's rules and authority, and the UN, so that they can all be in real time in case something goes off anywhere, you can put a pause. Because mm. mm. okay. it, it, it can't be just local pause because AI can get around that. Yeah. This one I established, but uh, there's a minister Ku, Korean guy, Korean minister, who used to allocate Korean government budget for the last 30 years. He's now out of the ministry mm -hmm. and he is a part of this and he, I will give it to him, you know, I will just establish, yeah. I'll give it to him. He is uh, looking for somebody like you, that's why, I, you know, somebody like you who are well sort of aware of what's going to happen and this one will have a fund. This will have a funds to sort of regulate. What happened to the UN AI, uh, you know, advisor or whatever? We okay. Yeah. All right. There's a there's a lot of different plots here, and some I can tell you afterward. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the the UN has something I didn't even know about because you know I I did UN stuff for 19 years. Um, they have a UN Council of previous presidents of the General Assembly. Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm. It's a council. And and the, the man from Korea mm. is the chairman of that council. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the, uh, the, the council, its primary job is to tell the current and future uh, presidents of the General Assembly what should be on the agenda. Now, the council couldn't come to an agreement on what to say about Ukraine. They couldn't come to an agreement about what to say about Israel. So they decided they'll come to an agreement about AI, especially uh, with some focus on terrorism, how the, that relationship can be managed with the UN. All right, and so I've been asked to give some material that's been done, it's been circulated for the folks around, but the chairman uh, is interested in the cybersecurity part of it. Okay. So uh, we'd like to come back and say, okay, the biggest cybersecurity threat we have actually is future AGI coming up. And we got to start working on this now because when it hits in a few years, you won't be ready. And that's the biggest security threat you got, <laughs> cybersecurity threat. So right now it'd be good to have a general assembly session on AI and hopefully saying, we've got to look at the future of AI, not only the present tense, but this will be the first time the General Assembly, if it goes, will deal with it. And then simultaneously in preparing for that, it would be great if a country, maybe Korea, maybe some other country, does a UN resolution to say we have to create a convention on AI and a working group to work on the details. And that's when the rubber will hit the road, when the UN countries start to collaborate on what the rules should be for international standard but then again, each country can have its own variations in certain ways it's going to do it because you have different legal systems and so forth. This minister is good at allocating the government budget and they can, he, he knows all, he's been allocating budgets for Samsung, LG and all of them, so they're indebted. You know, yeah. If, they, if he asks yeah. Samsung to pay this amount of money for yeah. this, so they will do it because they are right. sort of grateful for his right. sort of previous, you know, right. activities. Uh, I think we should meet him. And uh, is there any sort of? Uh, we do not have yeah. any forums. Yeah. Yeah. Like what I can do is I can resend you a phase one report. That's a sixty pages of the views. And then send you 
immediately the working draft of phase two, all the regulations. It's not a finished policy report, but you, you can cut and paste as you want to. So I'll send it as a doc, as a doc file so you can take out what you want. Uh, they might be interested in being supporting the, the scenarios because that's going to take a lot of work. Uh, and um, there are certain questions that they can certainly say, we would like you to make sure you address some of these questions in the scenarios, which is fair, perfectly fine. Mr. Gu uh, set up a uh, sort of company. He's helping this company called Let You In Edu, Let You In Edu, where they teach semiconductor designing and you know work. All those people who are working for Samsung semiconductors or Hynix semiconductors, they have to get the degree from this. Uh, education center that's you know because they're doing a specific education for semiconductor related you know foundry work or all these different work and they teach beforehand so that company is going to teach how mindbot robots yeah. are designed and produced and the used oh. and all this. And that's going to be done in Jeju? Yeah. <laughs> no, Where? It's not oh. Jeju. It's in Seoul. It's oh, Seoul. Good. Yeah, Seoul. Uh, so um, that education is a sort of pyramid type in the middle. Uh, yeah. Okay, lower level is teaching currently generative AI like Mid Journey and all these, you know, very simple ones. To uh, middle level and higher level, and for the higher level, they are teaching the uh, semiconductor robots and uh, yeah. you know, all that. Uh, with the uh, education sort of, um, you know, projects, what kind of uh, Subject? Can you teach? Can a Millennium Project come in to, you know, to teach? But we will. Be, this company will provide you money in different levels. How many classes? How many? How how long you can you know sort of teach or how how many uh, contents can you provide? Something like that. It's all you know. It varies, but. Uh, yeah. Well, we're not ex we're not experts on teaching robotics or the no, semiconductor. Okay. What we could do, if they're interested, and may not be, is that since the industries are changing so fast mm -hmm. and will change even faster because of all this stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. Then they have to think ahead because if they're educating people to do things to then to sell, they've got to be several years in advance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what's happening to the industry in five years? Mm -hmm. If they're not looking at what's happening in five years, they're causing people to be unemployed eventually. Mm -hmm. right? So one of the things that we could do is we could work with them to understand forecasting work and then they apply it to their own businesses, their own education system and what they're teaching them to say, oh, okay, we now have to start to, to teach them this and this and this ahead of time because if we just teach them the present tense, they'll be okay for some years, but maybe not in five years. So how do we guarantee a, a continuous work by changing what you're doing? What you're, what you're, but how do you know what that is? And what do you, and how do you create a, and maybe they create another collective intelligence system because that's supposed to keep track of all these changes. And that the, the education program could have their own collective intelligence system, keeping track of all these forecasts. Look at the assumptions behind the forecast. Correcting uh, the forecast if there's no law, if the assumptions are wrong, so so they have a, a, a brain for the education system, just like a person can have an AI assistant teaching them, they can have the uh, a collective intelligence system for the education system or the education center itself, and it could be like a, a mini brain, a mini brain for the future of the industry. Actually, Samsung and the other ones might be interested in that too. <laughs> Maybe. And also, I was thinking, you know, I was thinking we could teach 15 challenges, you know, for. True. Uh, but would they be interested in that? Because this, this is a technical school, right? Yeah, technical school. But the technical school is not interested in, in, in the 15 challenges, are they? Uh, this is a higher level for semiconductor right. robots, robot, right. not all robot operations, it's right. robot designing. Right. 
chip design. But this is a pro CEO level. Yeah. And uh, this is going to be jobs. Right. You know, uh, and here, at the moment, generated AI that right. they are teaching very simple. You go into a certain sort of, you know, app. <clears throat> like Mid Journey, you go into Mid Journey and then you pay for it and how to use it. It's right. very simple. Right. But here, here somewhere that, uh, or even CEO of the, the um, climate change is. Uh, so they will be interested in those things? I think so. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> climate change is coming. It will come within two, three years. Yeah. What do you have to be prepared? Right. As a CEO, right. or like ESG type of thing, right. or, you know, uh, education you have, or also AI you have, and everything. So this, the training center also has CEOs as students? Yeah, CEOs as a student. Yeah, okay. This is a general public for even right. yeah. middle school, high school, you know. Right. And these are CEOs, and we will charge quite a lot of money for this one, right. CEOs. And these are the job seekers, basically, you know? Right. If you have a, a degree or certificate from here, then... Uh, you can get a job. You can get a job easily, so that's what Well, you're my official boss in Korea, so you yeah. tell me what to do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. So, right. if you have uh, 15 challenges as a sort of uh, education program for CEOs, how can you uh, sort of, you know, establish it? Is that, you know, like a climate change class, how many 10-hour uh, classes or, you know, 3-hour classes will be suitable for CEOs to understand how right. serious climate change is? What do you think? Right. Well, we have done some of that for different countries. And different countries have different requirements because of what they are. But certainly, uh, say, three uh, to five uh, challenges could be taught within, say, a three-hour period, maybe an hour for each challenge. So it would be like a 15-hour uh, class, one hour per challenge, maybe divided into either three or five, maybe five classes. And we could put together some sort of curriculum for that. Yeah. Yeah. For, uh... But I would also think that the, the CEOs would be interested in enough of the futures research methods to understand, to get somebody to do it for them. Because the CEO isn't going to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. But the CEO has got to know what's the strengths and weaknesses of the different stuff to know who to give the assignment to and, and, what, and what to use from. So maybe it could be a combination of the 15 mm -hmm. and the methods. So maybe concepts and methods together. Mm -hmm. And the concepts could be the 15 global challenges plus futurist concepts themselves. So there's some, some concepts and terms, you know, and then the straightforward methods. Not detailed, but enough so that they understand what they are. So then they can turn to their staff and say, okay, I want you to do this and I want you to do that. Okay, that's what right. we covered a lot of stuff. <laughs> as, as always, as always, oh, okay. as always.